Allah the all wise knows the nature of his creation and therefore he legislated and commanded them with certain commandments that will rectify their affairs, provide them with a blissful life in this world, and lead to their salvation in the hereafter. And one of these commands that address human nature is the command of lowering the gaze, refraining from looking at things that are haram or can lead to haram. Gazing or eyesight is one of the most effective senses impacting the heart of the slave, he or she. As a matter of fact, Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi rahmatullahi alayhi said, the eyes are the widest gate through which attacks can take place, can take place against the heart. Setting your eyes free, without restrictions, to look at anything and everything they desire, enables the shaitan to plant the seed of immorality, lusts and desires, and eventually lead to acting upon these lusts and desires and actually fall into immorality. And that's why the command of Allah Azza wa Jal came to men. O oh, Muhammad, tell the believing men to lower their gaze. And the command came to women in the following verse. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ and uh, tell, O oh Muhammad, the believing women to lower their case. So the command from Allah Azza wa Jal in this particular case came to both men and women alike. And despite this being a divine command which the slave has no choice but to abide to and adhere by, Yet Allah Azza wa Jal gave the wisdom or one of the reasons behind this command saying ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ أَيْ لِقُلُوبِهِمْ This is purer for them, for their hearts. Guarding your eyesight enables you to maintain the purity of your heart. Eyesight is a blessing from Allah that either leads the slave to become deserving of the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal and his reward by means of utilizing them in what is lawful or can lead the slave to the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal and being deserving of his punishment by misusing them and looking at everything regardless of halal or haram. <clears throat> How can someone work on, improve his sense of lowering the gaze. 
How can I do that? Scholars mentioned many things. One of which is to remind yourself that this is a command from Allah as per the verse and as per the narration which is reported by Muslim. Jarir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu said, I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about, meaning about the ruling of accidental looks. A woman is passing by or a brother is passing by for the girls or for the females. And accidentally, one, one's eye catches the sister or the brother. The command of the Prophet ﷺ was, Israf basarak. Refrain from looking. This is not counted against you, as he said to Ali. Radiallahu anhu, he said, the first glance is yours, meaning you're not held accountable for it, but the second isn't. So if someone, male or female, is standing and a male or female passes by, and by accident he or she looks at her or him, then if you don't want that to be recorded against you, look the other way immediately, look down, close your eyes. Do whatever but refrain from looking. And the first look or glance does not mean you look and stare for half an hour and you say, I, I didn't take my eyes off. You're fooling yourself. But you can't fool Allah. Another means that's helpful in this regard is to remember that they will testify against you on the day of judgment. Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا مَا جَاءُوهَا أَيْ جَهَنَّمْ شَهِدَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَمْعُهُمْ وَأَبْصَارُهُمْ Until they reach it. Jahannam. The following will testify against them. Shahida alayhim, their hearing, their sight. Another thing is to remember that you will be questioned about your senses on the day of judgment. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada. Indeed, hearing, eyesight, and your heart about all of this one will be questioned. When you remember that you will be asked about them and that they will testify if you try to lie, but there is no way of lying because Allah Azza wa Jal will put a seal on the mouth. On this day, we'll put a seal on their mouths. And their hands will speak to us. And their feet will testify. Everything will testify either for or against us. So the choice is ours. Remind ourselves all the time that Allah Azza wa Jal sees everything and His knowledge is all encompassing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One might steal a glance when people are not paying attention or no one is noticing, but Allah knows that sees that and the angels record that. Allah says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ This glance that you steal, Allah knows it. Not only that, 
and he knows what our hearts conceal. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al Bukhari, O oh, young men, whoever is able, then let him get married, for it helps him lower his gaze and guard his private parts. So this is a means of enhancing or rather refraining from looking at what is haram for men and for women alike. And let me conclude with this, which is something that we take for granted and many, in many cases we're heedless of. It's a very powerful tool. Dua. Turn to Allah and ask Him. The Prophet ﷺ used to ask Him. The Prophet ﷺ, who is infallible, used to ask Allah Azza wa Jal regarding His sight. The Prophet ﷺ used to supplicate, and it's a long supplication. Amongst that, he said, O oh Allah, protect me against the evil of my sight. The evil of my vision. Meaning, so I do not look at anything that is haram. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, made a long list of benefits one obtains as a result of lowering his or her gaze. Amongst which he said, it makes the person lead a blissful life and attain success. Why? Because he is adhering to the commands of Allah, the exalted and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger will achieve a great success. Another benefit is that it makes a person deserving of Jannah. In the book of Al-Bayhaqi, and it's classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet ﷺ said, If you guarantee me six things, I will guarantee you Jannah. And one of these six things he said, lowering your gaze. By doing that, continuously, when it becomes part of your nature, part of your conduct, this is how you deal you don't look at haram, the Prophet ﷺ said, he will guarantee Jannah for the one who does so. It is human's nature that men enjoy looking at beautiful women and women enjoy looking at attractive and handsome men. This is a pleasure. But Islam came and put restrictions and boundaries, just like any lust or desire that Allah instilled as, an, as a nature in humans, this is just one of them. And refraining from that for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal will inherit the heart a greater pleasure and joy. As the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bayhaqi and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, you will never leave something or give something up for the sake of Allah, except that Allah Azza wa Jal will compensate you with something that is better than it. So the joy that you see, the pleasure that you feel by looking at a beautiful woman, 
or a handsome man, Allah Azza wa Jal, if we refrain from this for His sake, if we suppress our desires that are haram for the sake of Allah, Allah promised through His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give us something in return that is much better. He also, Ibn Al-Qayyim that is, mentioned that lowering the gaze is a protection, is a shield for the heart against the arrows shot by the devil. You see, when you shoot your eye, it's an arrow shot back to your heart by the devil. And you have the gate wide open, as we stated. So, when you refrain, you shield your heart against that. But if you leave it open, the devil starts shooting fatal, poisonous arrows that can lead to one's destruction. And I will conclude with the following story. The consequence of opening the gate, of allowing the devil to shoot his uh, poisonous arrows into the heart. Ibn al-Jawzi and al-Qurtubi and others narrated this following story. There was a uh, mu'adhan, a person who calls the adhan in the masjid. And he was a pious man. He was described to have a face that was illuminating with the light of piety. It was bright, reflecting the light in his heart, the light of guidance. And then one day, the minaret was built. They didn't used to have them and then they started that. So he ascended the minaret to call the Adhan. And next to that, ha to that masjid, there was a house of a Christian man who had a daughter. When he went up, he looked down and he saw that young lady and she was extremely attractive. She stole his heart. Why? Because he looked and he didn't turn the other way. He looked and he stared. From that day on, from that moment on, every time he went up, he would look down to see if she's there so he can look at her and enjoy her beauty. What a foolish thing to do. What joy is it when you just see and you can't do anything? It's like a fasting person flipping through a menu of food and he can't eat. Things developed until it reached a bad level. He started ascending the mimbar, the, the minaret, at times other than the times of Adhan, just to look at her. Subhanallah. Look at the steps, the gradual steps of the devil. And how they take you slowly but surely to destruction. And then one day, he couldn't wait. He couldn't handle his lust any longer. So he went down. He went out of the masjid. He approached the door and he knocked. So that young lady opened. He pushed the door and walked in. Couldn't control himself and embraced her and hugged her. She said, this is deception. What are you doing? Going into the house and hugging me like this. What do you want? What's wrong with you? He said, I want you. I can't wait anymore. He said, I, she said, I will not respond to you in immorality. Subhanallah. A Christian. She said, no. 
She said, he said, then I will marry you. She said, you're Muslim. I'm Christian. My father will not give me to you in marriage. He said, I will become Christian to marry you. She said, prove it. Drink wine and eat pork. He said, consider me Christian. Where is the wine and where is the pork? So she gave him. He ate and he drank. She said, my father is not home. I will get into my, ha my room. You wait for him on the roof until he comes and then we will conclude the marriage. He went up, of course, drinking wine, drinking alcohol for the first time in his life. He became drunk and he fell off the roof, broke his neck and died. So he neither retained his feet, nor did he achieve that pleasure, which he was striving very hard for to the point that he apostated. He left Islam. And it all started with a look. A single look. Which he did not adhere to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with its regard. And therefore the evil consequence happened. What a miserable way to end one's life. But again... This is how shaitan works. He would not come to someone who's that pious and say become Christian from the first time. Or leave Islam. That's why we understand in light of stories like this, the statement of scholars such as Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen when he said, sins are messages delivered that can... Deliver the person to the state of disbelief. One leading to the other, leading to the third, the fourth, until eventually one will lead, would lose his faith entirely. We ask Allah's protection against us. Allahumma ameen.